All right. All right, I think most of the stuff I brought deals with people who hadn't turned very much for very long. If you've ever tried to make a mallet, and it come out looking like this, as you can see that, it's crooked. Well, the best way to stop that, I made this little jig. You set it on your drill press, bolt it, and you put a small bit in it and send it in the center of the V. And anything you lay on it should go straight through the center. Now, should is a good big deal. And it will come out on there like it's supposed to. Okay, now then, I made one to bring up here. And if you make that work every time, then I can save some motion front property. Because I turn one. And you probably can't see it because I corrected it, but it wasn't straight because I let it slip just a little when I tried to start to cut, to turn it. But anyway, it's pretty much foolproof if you'll clamp it all down. If you want to turn some of this around, I'll, I'll turn around. I didn't finish most of this stuff, but is there any questions about what, what you do? I'm going to put that on the, back, on the brain back table so somebody can take it home. And I rough one out to... All you got to do is just lay it on, on your drill press, clamp it down, and when you drill it, it will be in the center if you set it all up on your... All right. This is something I brought for you to look at. If y'all have never seen one of these, it's a, an extension, whatever, you know, just to pull your work out. I don't know if y'all know that they may make these or not, but I brought one just so you can see. Well, of course, I do a lot of metal work, and I use these. This will chuck up inside of a chuck and turn your metal lathe into wood lathe by just putting your... Uh, more taper inside of it. Somewhere in here I got some more stuff. We'll get this little tool next. I hear it rolling around in there if I can just find it. All right. I know it's in here somewhere. Oh. Have you ever made these little things, little pull chains? All right. This I'll make just to do these with. You put it in there, you drill your hole with that bit, and that bit fits the There's another one somewhere. Yeah, never mind then. But anyway, this is also your mandrel. You drill your hole, and then when you get through, you just simply drop the little chain down and glue it down inside of there. And I give them what usually when somebody buys something from me, I just because they, you can buy these things for almost nothing. And right here's what I need to show. I could not find my golf balls. I made a lot of bottle stoppers, and I was using Harley Davidson bottle, uh, golf balls. And I wanted the insignia to be dead on top. Anyway, you'd line it up where it's dead on top, and then when you put this in your lathe and chuck it up in the, in the jaw cut, then you drill right straight through it, and your hole will be so that the insignia is straight on top, and you can make one of these to fit any kind of ball you want to. If you don't want to look at some of this, just hard, and I'll pass them around. You can use that to even make golf balls to fit most anything. It's a simple little tool to make and it will always put your hole where you want it. You can also turn a ball inside and eyeball it through the other hole and turn it from the other direction. But when you put that into your lathe and in your lathe jaws, it will clamp it and it'll hold it where it belongs. Uh, I think that's it. Oh, I hear it. I hear the other one. This what I was. This goes on here like so, and then you run your tail shaft up and turn it. That's all there is to it. And I make these. If you're over on the other, I brought a bolo tie, 
And the little do do that is that you hang on the end of your bolo tie. I turn them the same way. I, I make one of these for whatever size hole I want inside of my finished product in different bits. And I didn't bring them all because they're all the same concept. If y'all want to look at this, I'll. Now this will end up over on the be back on the bring back table too. Be back bring back table. You can put this with it also. We're going. Yes. Thank you very kindly. Well, I started with an airbrush when I was doing my Morocco blue bowls, and when we were in class. Uh, David showed you the atomizer where you have to kind of blow into the tube to get the dye onto the bowl. So I tried that. Uh, I got tired of being down here like this and blowing air through it. And it finally realized that I had an airbrush. So I got the airbrush out and I was using the airbrush to do it. But when I got done, I had to clean the airbrush all the time. And so then I started making some smaller pieces just to practice with the tools for making the Morocco blue bowls. And I ran into the Coptic airbrush system. And basically what it is, is you can take pretty much any color you want and put the pin in here like this. And then <coughs> I can do whatever color I want. And when I'm done, I simply take the airbrush out. Yes, the Coptic pins from Dick Brick run about $5.85. The refills for them are like this. They're five and a quarter, and each one of these will refill every pin eight times. Okay. Wonderful. Okay. John says Okay, in Denton you can buy them at Bortman's? Okay. So you've got a local supplier right here. Yeah, they're designed specifically for this airbrush. Now if you don't have a compressor they also have a can of air that fits on top of this. And you can order just the can of air and do the same thing. Yeah? Do you have to clean that and put it in? No, there's no cleaning between it. Because all you're doing is you're taking the, the marker. Oh, wrong, wrong end. <coughs> and you're just blowing air across the tip of the marker. So there's nothing ever this airbrush itself never touches the, the marker so it's just a matter of and when you get when you start this it's not like a regular airbrush where you aim directly at something to get the the paint on it with this one you're gonna it's gonna spray high so you just have to learn to point down a little bit at it and that that makes it perfect every time okay so it's kind of a for me, it was a lifesaver because I just got real tired of cleaning my airbrush all the time. <coughs> and I've got one other little trick. Steve, yes. Uh, do you have any uh, adjustments to make the air, amount of air that you're? Yeah, just how 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 pre how hard you press on the on the tip of it. But there isn't any sort of a width of spray or anything. No. No, there's no, you can't get, you can't adjust the width of it very well. 
I had problems with finding where the bottom of my bowl was. So, I don't remember who told me about this. I have several of these, each one for my lathe, and I've got a wedge in here so that it doesn't move. But if I do this, and I mark right there, right there, That's where my jaws are at. Yeah, if I hit that black line, I'm going to go through. So I'll come back over here and I'll put a quarter of an inch away. I'll put a red line. Okay? Because <laughs> I don't want to get to that red line. And then, if you don't know for sure, you're eyeballing it and you're mm, Okay, maybe, maybe not. <clears throat> With this, I can go in and measure the depth of my bowl very easily. I can go down here, make a mark, and then I can put it here, and I can look, and I know exactly how much room I've got left. Okay? It makes finding the bottom of your bowl a whole lot easier. And when you're starting to do all the spray painting, make yourself a little block. Just like that. Cheap, easy, but if you're actually spraying on your, uh, with an airbrush or with, even with the Coptic markers, you don't want to get it all over your lathe. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's it. Thanks. John Horn talked about um, making jam chucks, and, and so I want to continue that process. I make them, but I turn Morris tapers, and um, once you turn a Morris taper, like John mentioned, you jam it in. You can glue anything on here you want to do. If you want a bigger jam chuck, you can do that. If you want to put an indentation in it, you want to make spheres, you can add plastic to it. And just to, uh, while I'm making them, um, I decided that rather than take them off the lathe and try it in a Morris taper every time, I'd make an adapter to, that I can just put on to see how they, they fit while I'm making them so it doesn't take any extra time. And all you do to make that is you take a standard metal Morris taper, you put it in there, you put a couple blocks of wood next to it, you glue it in place, put a couple screws on it, and you've made a jig to measure your Morris taper as you're making them so that uh, once you make one, as you're making it, you can see if it's going to fit or not. And it's real handy. I use these a lot for uh, all kinds of different things, for making jam chucks or turning spheres or uh, just all kinds of different, different items. And I even make a drive center out of it. So I've got a, a drive center that's a safety, uh, the Morris Taper drive center with a, the pin in the middle of it. Um, if you want to turn something and you want to, don't want to worry about a catch, um, you don't have to worry about it because it will just spin on here. And it'll, depending on the amount of pressure you put on with the tailstock, it'll keep turning. I also like making my own tools and tool handles. So here's a sample of some of the handles I've made. I buy three-quarter inch rod, aluminum rod, 
on uh, eBay. I buy the tubing that's on the handle from Home Depot, and then I buy it in 10 foot sections. And then I just, uh, I just drill them out. And in most cases, I'll, mo all of my tools, just about all the tools, are handleless so that, that I, can, uh, I can use these handles for interchanging uh, any of them. I, I've got a skew here that I made out of a rod from uh, Doug Thompson, but it's the handles that, that make it really convenient. And uh, uh, they're relatively easy to make and they're inexpensive. I think um, a eight inch aluminum rod runs about four bucks or three bucks. Uh, I've got about a dollar's worth of, of uh, rubber plastic for the handle, and I got about 70 cents for the, for the knob. Um, so for five bucks or four and a half bucks, um, you can make a, a really nice, comfortable, usable handle for, for all of your tools. So. I'm sorry? Do you have any trouble putting the tubing onto the bar? No. Um, I, I, uh, I start it, and I, I made a wooden block, and I just take a, a mallet and just pound it on. Hairspray. You could do that, yeah. It'll, it'll lubricate it, and then it also dries. Yeah, it, I, I've not had a problem most of the time. Some of the tubing you find now is a little bit oversized even, so um, it's... It doesn't want to uh, adhere quite as well. So. Yeah, I think that strength box that he uses is soaking water. Trent Box uses air pressure. Yeah. Yeah. I think Trent Box uses air pressure on all of his, doesn't he? Yeah. And they really stick well. So. That's it. I'm sorry? I'm getting all kind of flack back here. <laughs> <laughs> Glenn says put hairspray in there, but I don't know where he gets his hairspray from. Some of us don't need any. 